caught me by surprise. That is, it's like you guys practiced that or something. That was a thing of beauty. And I almost never, I almost didn't make it down for the show too. That's, that's the thing that's, I was, okay, I'm, I'm, ju I'm jumping on the plane and all I forgot to do was stick my little chapstick in the Ziploc bag. You know where you put the, where you put your gels and your liquids? Just put it in there with the, when you're going through the plane? I just forgot to stick it in there. Security guy was like, oh, uh, you didn't put your chapstick in there. You forgot to put it in there. And I, it's a gel. You're supposed to put it in the bag. I was like, oh, I guess I must have just forgotten. I'll, I'll take it now. And he's like, no, no, no. Uh, I need to confiscate it because you didn't put it in the bag. <laughs> I was like, dude, it's chapstick, you know? What do you do with chapstick? You know, take me somewhere. Granted, it did say lip balm on it. It did say lip balm, hey? A little phonics joke, hey? Got a clapping from the teacher in the back. I don't know. I, uh, at least I flew in, you know, at least it was a nice big airport to come here. I've been flying into some crazy small airports as of late. I, I was in uh, Arab, Alabama a couple nights ago. Um, I've, been into, I've been smaller, okay, in Canada, I'm, I'm Canadian, uh, in Canada, I've flown into some tiny airports up north, like just the smallest things you, I flew into this place called Trail, British Columbia, and honestly, I think they decided that week, hey, let's be a commercial airport, huh? <laughs> because it was, the, it was the most, it was the tiniest thing, I, I, honestly, I think this is what happened, I think they went to the farmer who had a little shack and, or shed there <laughs> near the landing strip, and they said to him, hey, um, can we buy that from you? Because we want to fix it up and turn it into a terminal. <laughs> and then they just never got around to fixing it up. <laughs> Seriously, it was a slanted roof. Honestly, I had to walk in like this. I'm like, are you kidding me? What is this, a chicken coop? It was, the, it was dirty, it wasn't even clean, it was, and no one worked there. It was like empty. They had this little concession basket. They didn't have a concession stand, they had a basket. Honestly, it had Doritos in it, right? <laughs> And then it had a little sign that said 75 cents on the honor system. <laughs> right? It's on the honor, because no one was working. I guess they were off feeding the chickens. So I, I put my 50 cents in, I grabbed the chips. <laughs> no. No, I didn't have any money. I just grabbed it. Um, that's not true either. No, I put my money in, I grabbed it. But here's the other thing, because that was on the honor system. Uh, here's where it gets scary. Um, uh, airport security. Um, also on the honor system. <laughs> I'm not making this up. The guy asked me. That's how he did it. He asked me. So you, uh, you have any bombs or anything is in there in, in your bags there? Um, no. <laughs> Should be fine then. Let's go. <laughs> that was it. What if I would have said yes? Uh, actually, yeah, I do. I do have some bombs. You do? Oh. Um. Uh, you're not gonna detonate it in the air or anything, are you? No, no. I should. Oh, it should be fine then. Come on. <laughs> Better get out there and load the plane. The Pilots are done milking the cows. <laughs> this is a tiny little thing. I've had weird things happen in, in Canada when I've been flying in. Uh, I flew into Calgary this one time, bigger airport. You know, it's a city of a million people. Um, flying into this airport. Um, I, I got a window seat so I can see we're about to touch down. Like, we're, we're feet from touching down. We're almost touching down. And then right before we touch down, the captain cranks back on her. We go straight back up again, right? It was, it was, yeah, it was like, it was right down. I was like... <sighs> We take off again. Everybody's getting freaked out now, right? It's like, whoa, you don't, you don't take off like that unless something major just happened, right? We're all just a little bit worried there until the captain comes over the intercom and he's like, sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. There was a uh, coyote on the runway. There's a coyote on the runway? Shouldn't this thing be fenced or something like that? It's just wide open. Come on, let the animals just run around and have fun. Look at all the freedom, all the room we have here. I don't know. Don't tell it to the terrorists, I guess, right? <laughs> if they know that that's the deal, they'll be dressing up in fox outfits and bear outfits and everything. Just, ah, oh, no, I'm an animal. Oh, okay, come on to the tarmac. Just run on there. Don't forget your lip balm. Oh, thank you. I'll need that for later. <laughs> I don't know. When I started doing comedy, though, um, I've been doing comedy for a while. When I started doing comedy, I promised myself I would never do... Uh, a joke about the air sickness bag, a little barf bag there. It's hack. It's you know I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do that kind of stuff. I promised myself when I started I would never do a joke about an air sickness bag. Um, but this one time um, I was 
Well, when it happens, you gotta talk about it though, right? So this one time, I'm flying, it was, I was in the US, I'm flying, and I'm sitting beside this lady. Normally I have a little snooze, right? I just go to sleep right away, I don't really talk to people. But for some reason, you know, I just I, I struck up a conversation with this lady, lovely lady, we were talking, had some grandchildren. Very, she showed me pictures of it. <laughs> And, and we hit a little bit of turbulence, not much, just kind of a little bit of a boom, boom right? And she got sick fast. Like, I've never seen someone, go, and, but luckily, she was a super fast draw, too. Like, if she was in the Wild West, she'd still be alive, you know what I mean? Like, it was, it happened so fast. I was just talking to her, yeah, well, that's interesting. Well, and another one, and she filled it just like that. I mean, it was the fastest. I, I, that's why I said I'd never do a joke about it. It's, it's sickening. But I didn't, want, I didn't want her to feel bad. Obviously, she's, you know, a little bit of turbulence set her tummy off a little bit, and I didn't want her to feel even worse, so I thought, oh, I'll, I'll uh, maybe keep the conversation going so she doesn't feel even worse yet, you know? But then I didn't know what to talk about, right? So I was like, well, it's a funny noise that throwing up, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> blah! <laughs> Sounds like you're bored or something. How was the flight? Kind of blah! <laughs> it's a good in-flight meal, though, wasn't it? Was it delicious or what? I guess you've known, you've seen it twice. Am I right? <laughs> blah. <laughs> Did you find it kind of blah? <laughs> <Did you? laughs> I'm gonna go to the bathroom here, excuse me. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know what to do. And then when we, we left, she just stuffed it into the seat pocket in front and we, <laughs> seriously. And then she was like, come on, let's go. And all of a sudden I'm an accomplice? What, okay. Uh, shouldn't we tell somebody or something? She was like, be quiet, right? Like, it was like, it was scary. We just walked out. I feel bad for the next guy, right? Poor next guy coming down there. Boy, I love these in-flight magazines. <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> really? Because I find them kind of bleh myself. I, I don't know. <laughs> That's why I said I'd never do those kind of jokes. <laughs> Terrible. Terrible. I, uh, here's a weird thing that happened to me. I'm walking around uh, here in Arizona, walking down on the street. Um, the police just stopped, I guess, to check in on me and see how I was doing, all these kinds of things. Uh, they asked me for some ID. I didn't have my passport or anything with, uh, with on me. And the next thing I know, I'm in Mexico. Is that uh, happen? Does that happen a lot? Luckily, it was pretty easy to, to cross that border. You just jump a fence and you're back in. <laughs> The can hey, it's, it, it doesn't work that way coming in, like from Canada into the U.S. That's not easy. Like it used to be happy, it used to be fun. It used to be when we were younger, and Canadians would come in, they'd be like, "Come on in to America, we'd love to have you." They were happy, they were excited. The only thing they cared about was, "Don't bring your dirty, filthy Canadian fruit." That's all they cared about. <laughs> Apparently, we've got bad fruit. I don't know what it is, but no fruit. Okay, no fruit. But now they're mad all the time. They're mad every time you go by there. They're always, they're mad about something. I tried to lighten it up the last time I went through. You know, I was going through. The guy's like, so, uh, is he a comedian? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. So, uh, so what are you going to be talking about? I was like, I don't know. It depends how well this goes. <laughs> <laughs> don't say that. <laughs> no. and don't do this, too. Don't do that, either. <laughs> I not care for that. I don't know. I, this is, okay, this is a true story. Not this October, but the October before. I was crossing the border from Canada into the U.S., and I got there. Absolutely true story. I got there. I handed the guy my passport. He takes it. He scans it through the machine. First thing he said to me after he scanned it through the machine, don't make any sudden movements. <laughs> right? I was like, okay, all right. Then he's like, shut off your vehicle and give me the keys, too. So I was like, okay. So I shut off the vehicle. I hand him the keys slowly. Right, because he said no sudden movements, you know. Here come the keys. <laughs> nice and slow. <laughs> yeah, I might not. I might not have done that. I was just trying to make the story more exciting. Um, but then he said to me, in a couple of moments, I'm going to ask you to get out of the car. And when you do, if you make any sudden movements at all, we're going to take you to the ground. <laughs> That's what he said to me. I'll tell you, the reason he said a couple of moments, because he needed time for his armed buddies to come out and surround the car. 
Seriously, by the time I got out, there were six of them. I'm not going to make up the number for the story. There were six of them standing around the car. They had their hands on their guns. They didn't have them drawn, but their hands on their guns, on their hips, and ready to, ready to shoot a Canadian mode. <laughs> like, you know, they've been training for this. Can't wait to shoot me a Canuck. You know what I mean? Like, they're... It wasn't like this either. I don't know why I'm doing this. That's, it wasn't this awkward looking. Should I shoot him or should I do a pirouette? <laughs> anyway, so he opens the car door. Um, I step out. Of course, now I'm towering over this guy, right? So now I'm scared he's going to have like, t you know, like small man complex or something, <laughs> yeah, you know? Take the tall guy down a peg or two! Right? So I'm like, everything's going to be okay. Everybody just calm down. Just take it easy. I won't hurt you. I didn't do that either. <laughs> I was too scared. I just went to the back of the car, put my hands on the hood. And, well, okay, the hood would be the front, I guess. It was a Porsche. Um, I was trying to think of a car that did that. And Beetle didn't sound as cool. Anyway, they, they basically, they handcuffed me behind my back and they grabbed me with the armed guard and took me into the uh, customs office there like I was some kind of wanted fugitive or something, right? Now I'm starting to get a little freaked out, right? Like this doesn't seem like a, like a routine stop or anything, right? Imagine the people behind me, right? They're probably getting a little scared themselves, you know? See this car pull up, people jump out with guns, probably getting a little freaked out themselves, you know? It's like, eat the fruit, Lois, eat the fruit! <laughs> That was a banana. That was a banana, that one. Because you need your potassium for jail. Am I right? Am I right? So they, they, uh, they took me into the customs office, and uh, I was in there for like, this is an absolutely true story, too. I was in there for like maybe five seconds, right? Some guard walks all nonchalantly from behind the counter. He's like, oh, I guess it's a computer malfunction. You can just let him go. <laughs> and that was it. It was that there was no explanation, no apology, no place to go change, nothing. It was... <laughs> I'm actually sore doing that. I can't, I can't, I've been doing, you know, here's the, the reason. I've been doing P90X again. I started the P90X. You know what P90X is? It's like, by applause, how many people know P90X? Have heard of P90X? No. Yeah. How many people have done it by applause? How many people have done? A few of you? A few less? How many people have finished P90X? One lady. It's hard. Give her a round of applause. That is, that's amazing. Yeah, you know, you, you deserve a round of applause to, uh, to lie like that to all of us in front of everybody. No, it's hard though, right? Like it's, it's pretty, here's the thing about it. Those of you who don't know, it's, a, it's stuff you can do at home. It's a home workout thing. A lot of stuff you can do at home, push-ups, pull-ups, stuff like that. But it's really intense. Like when they say 90, it's 90 days and you're going to get ripped. Or we'll come over there and rip something off. Like they're crazy. They're crazy. <laughs> I put the first one in and it was like uh, push-ups. As many push-ups as you can do in a minute, right? So I was, okay, so I, I did my number. And uh, we don't have a lot of time, so I'll just skip specifics. Um, <laughs> But then right after that, it was pull-ups, as many pull-ups as you can do in a minute. So right away, we went over there. And then when that was done, it was back to here. It was a different kind of push-up, but it was like as many as you can do in a minute again. And it just went back and forth and back and forth. And this was an hour straight. An hour straight of go not just going a certain number, then stopping. Going to fatigue till you can't like, ah, I'm done. And do it again, right? This was crazy. I'll be honest with you. Nine or ten minutes in, I was done. That first time I did it, I was done. I could do no on my knees trying to do one more push-up. Come on, give me a girl push-up. <laughs> then I hear Buddy counting, 13 and 14. One! <laughs> then he's like, set goals for yourself and try to reach those goals. Mm, a half? <laughs> Just want to get my face off the ground. That's the goal right now. The bottom half's easy, right? <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, it was crazy. I, was, I don't know about you, but I was in so much pain that first week. 
I, was in, I could barely lift my arms. I was in so much pain that first week. You know what I'm talking about? My kids were making fun of me because I was, every, every spoonful of soup felt like I was doing a rep. You know, I was like. <laughs> okay, now I'm going to take a mid-set break there. I'm going to take a mid-set break and lick from the bowl. <laughs> mid-set lick break is what I'm going to take. Oh, it was crazy painful. And the thing, too, is uh, when my mind, like, I was in so much pain. I was walking around. I thought, like, my mind was tricked. I thought I was getting huge, right? Because you can feel it everywhere. I was like, this stuff is working. This is crazy. <laughs> there's, I was looking back at pictures I had on Facebook during that time, and there's this one picture when I was in the middle of doing it, and I was just standing there. Nobody around me, not, I'm just standing there, and for whatever reason, my arm is way out here. My mind is like, we're this big now. We're huge. We're this big. Are you sure? I think we're more right around here. No, trust me. I'm your mind. We're here now. Hey. And I don't know about you, but, but muscles would tighten up on me. They would just, not during the workout either, just later on in the day, just, they would just, uh, doing something completely unrelated, and they would just tense right up. Muscles I didn't even know I had. You know, I'd be talking to somebody, well, that's a good point. Did you, but, ah! muscle in my ear? This is ridiculous. I have muscly ears now. Oh, it was crazy. And uh, you got to back me up on this one, okay? Because, uh, well, you guys both can back me up, whoever else was here. Because um, they won't believe me unless you guys back me up. Uh, there's, and the second, uh, second day is this thing called plyometrics, jump training, right? A lot of, a lot of this action, a lot of, a lot of jump training. I'm not making it look as, it's more athletic looking than I'm doing it. I'm <laughs> I'm, I'm making it look more like an episode of Glee is what I'm doing. It's not, it's more athletic than that. I, I'm making it look bad. But, but showing you how to do the jump training, there's four people, four instructors showing you how to do jump training. Uh, out of the four, one of the guys has only one leg. Am I right? Back me up on this. There's a one-legged guy doing jump training. Like, he's got a really good prosthetic leg, but he's just going, right? He's just like, and I can't keep up to him, right? I can't with the one-legged guy? Come on! <laughs> but you know why they do that? They're trying to motivate you, right? Like, look at this guy. If he can do it, you can do it. Come on. Just give it your all kind of thing. But it, it makes you feel horrible. It makes you feel horrible about yourself. Every video, they stick somebody on there, right? There's like that red-haired 90-year-old woman who's just like... <laughs> she can do it, I can do it. Every video, they stick somebody on there. Just make you feel terrible about yourself. Look at this woman, she just gave birth three hours ago. <laughs> three hours ago, she was in labor, and she's doing stomach crunches. Well, look, there's her baby doing it. Three-hour-old baby doing stomach... <laughs> I'm just tired talking about it. I think I pulled something too. Doing my glee moves. Oh man. Seriously, I'm actually tired. Uh, the reason I started doing uh, P90X in the first place, honestly, uh, I was just trying to get my arms a little bigger. So my, my hands wouldn't look quite as ridiculous on my body. I just thought if I kind of added some, it wouldn't be quite as freakish if I kind of added. Like, if that was my arm, that's not even so bad. If that whole thing was my arm, that's like, that's pretty good. Not so much that, right? Seriously, it looks like I can't even lift it. Look how heavy that looks. Just trying to wave. This is the reason you should never do steroids. Never inject steroids directly into your hands. Look what's gonna happen. You just get big hands and rage. That's it. Like, I'm no doctor, but it's not like swollen to you. You know what I mean? That's, <laughs> maybe not, no. No, they look skinny, that's what they look like. Oh, I don't know. It, honestly, it looks like somebody ran over my hand with a steamroller when I wasn't looking, doesn't it? It, looks, it just looked kind of flattened out. It was like, hey, what's going on? <laughs> hey! It's a big idea. You. Hang on, I just gotta scratch my back here. Hang on. 
Um, <laughs> I do need some water, though. It's a two-liter bottle, by the way. It's a two-liter. Uh, <laughs> did you see how I started talking into the, into the bottle instead of the thing? It's a two-liter bottle. <laughs> I'm such an idiot sometimes. Uh, here's the worst part of it all, okay? Get ready for this. The worst part of the whole thing um, is I'm pretty sure hands aren't supposed to be this big in proportion to one's head either. You see what I mean? That's where it's... And a tiny head. Look how small my head is. That's not right. Isn't it? Way too big, way too small. Right? Like that's... I'm a freak. You know, you know, somebody told me one time, too, they said that when you make a fist uh, with your hand, that's how big your heart is. <laughs> Look at that thing. That's, that's an elephant heart. That's how big that is. That's massive. It's like a cow's heart, at least. I could, I could, a couple of you, just plug in. I got you covered. Go ahead. Just plug right in there. I don't know if I would do that, but I'm just saying. I have to pump a little harder for more people. The same person, though, told me, when you make a fist with your hand, that's the size of your heart. He also said, when you put two fists together, that's supposed to be the size of your brain. <laughs> that's not going to fit in my head, is it? I got ripped off in the brain department, man. I got maybe half of that if I'm lucky. I'm literally a halfwit. Yeah. High five. Everybody, high five. Yeah. That was fun. I don't know. But seriously, it is a big discrepancy. I mean, my glove size, 4XL. Hat size, youth medium. That's not... Seriously. I buy, I buy my gloves at Big and Tall, and I buy my hats at Baby Gap. Can I get one without a propeller? I need a non-propeller hat. Thank, well, I'll just take this off. That's fine. Thank you. I don't know. But you know what the worst part is? I can actually fit my gloves um, over my head. Like even my gloves are too big for my little head. Just the... Is that a stegosaurus? What is that? <laughs> I don't know. And you know what's going to happen? A thousand years from now, some paleontologist is going to be digging around, rooting around. He's going to find my bones. And he's going to be like, I found the missing link! Found the missing link between birds and people. Look at his tiny little bird brain. But he already had arms, but look at those huge wings at the end of them. I just wanted to do that in the show, so I wrote that joke in just so I could do that. That also looks a little bit like Lee, doesn't it? I don't know what's wrong with me tonight. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I'm, I'm, not a, I'm not the missing link, though. I'm, uh, I'm just a freak. I'm just a mutant. I guess that's a mutation of sorts. Right? I could be a mutant. Not like a cool mutant. Like, I couldn't be calling like an X-Men or something like that, right? Because I'd be like, hey, can I join? Uh, do you have any, what, what, what kind of powers do you have? Uh, I'm really good at giving directions. Uh, <laughs> Go down that way and hang a right. And actually, I'm touching the building now. My finger's touching the building. Just follow my finger. It's right there. Yeah, I'll wait. We need a Canadian superhero. That's what, that's what we need. Eh? Don't you guys think so? You don't agree? Yeah? It'd be weird, though. He'd be out in the woods somewhere, because that's what we do. And he'd get bit by, like, a radioactive moose or something. And then I'll, he'd have powers of the bear. I don't know, I'm just imagining. Oh, I gotta tell you a bear story. Okay, I was in, I was in Calgary again. I don't know why everything happens in Calgary, but I was, I was there doing a show. I was watching the evening news. The evening news came on, it was a story about these guys. Um, they went out into the woods. <laughs> That's what we do. They went for a hike, a bunch of buddies. Hey, let's go out for a hike, it'll be fun. Uh, they came across a bear. So when you see a bear in the woods, you're supposed to like, you know, back away slowly and you know, you don't wanna, you don't want to cause any trouble or whatever. Uh, what you're not supposed to do is uh, run. And these guys um, ran because they're idiots. 
can't outrun a bear, right? So they saw him. Hey, it's a bear. What do we do? Run, I believe. So they just take off running, these guys. So then the bear's like, hey, I'm faster than you. Are you guys stupid? So he runs after him. This guy trips. This is the story. So he tripped and fell, and he landed on the ground. And by the time he turned up, uh, there was, the bear was right there, right? Because the bear was like, hey, I'm faster than you. That's why you don't run. So he stood up. And you guys, it's so funny. You're getting all serious. What, what happened to the guy? Is he okay? <laughs> It's a true story, though. So he, he stood up, and he was face-to-face -face with a bear on his hind legs now, okay? And this is what he said now on the news report. This is not me. This is him saying. This is what he said. So I'd taken some Taekwondo classes recently. <laughs> this is what he said. And it was a natural instinct to kick him in the nose. He did. He kicked the bear in the nose. And then I guess he just kept giving him some shots, like, come on, bear, I'll have at ya. And the bear was like, hey, 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 I'm a bear. I could literally knock your head off. But this is freaking me out. And he took off running. This guy fought a bear and won. Would you even brag about that, though? Because first of all, um, you, you beat up a bear. So there's probably no man on earth that would scare you anymore at that point, right? It'd be the biggest guy around. It's like, I just knocked a bear out. So what do you want to do, right? Wouldn't be bad. You'd be walking around. You'd be strutting around. You'd be like, I am the man. I beat up bears. That's what I do, right? Walking by somebody, you just get out of the way. Move out of the way. I just punched a bear in the jaw, okay, Grandma? I don't care if that's a new hip. Don't get in my way. And can I have an omelet for breakfast tomorrow? Can I have a... Thank you. Okay. So anyway, I was talk I was, I was, I mentioned this story from stage. I don't know, I don't always talk about it, but uh, this particular time I was in Calgary and I mentioned this story, something made me think of it. And uh, this guy came up to me after the show and he was like, hey, that guy you're talking about that uh, uh, fought the bear? Um, that, was, that was a buddy of mine. We were on the hiking trip with him. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay, so what happened? He said, well, we all um, uh, climbed up trees, which by the way is another thing you don't do. <laughs> Like, I don't know what pamphlet these guys were looking at. Run and climb up trees! <laughs> anyway, he said they were all up in trees around him. There's a couple of them. And they were cheering him on, he said. <laughs> so they're yelling down to him, Come on, you can do it! You can beat up the bear! You're a man! You can just beat the bear up. In fact, we're so confident that you can do it, we're not even gonna come down and help you. <laughs> just gonna watch this unfold. Oh, the most bizarre story ever. Um, you know one thing I really like about what, how, how you Americans do things? Anytime like, I'm on a plane or something and there's somebody that's, that's served either overseas or wherever in your military or, or it just served your country in any way, you guys always make sure you acknowledge them and tell them thank you for serving the country. And we just don't do that. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a good thing. Yeah. Yep. And we don't do that enough in Canada. We don't do that enough. I wish we'd do that more because our guys are out there doing it without equipment. Um, <laughs> They deserve it too. I wish we'd do that more, we're Canadians, you know? We, I don't know if you guys know this, we, we, when, we sent our we, when we sent our troops over to Afghanistan, we sent our troops over there um, in green camouflage, because that's all we had at the time. This is absolutely true, green camouflage to the desert. Seriously, our little Canadian green troops run along the desert, desert sands, you know? Taliban are like, should we shoot them? No, don't shoot them, they're Canadian. They're unarmed. Oh, okay, that's right. You know, Canadian special forces are like, don't mind me, I'm just a green bush. The wind's blowing me all willy-nilly. I was confused growing up about our military. I just didn't understand some of the decisions, some of the things we did. I used to live near this military base, and I'd see these guys going on their convoys, going off to do their military exercises. I lived in, in a place called Saskatchewan, and these guys would always go and do their military exercises. And other countries, when they're, like, exercises, you're practicing for war. Other countries, you'd see missiles, tanks, might, power, force. Every time I saw these convoys in Saskatchewan go by, it was the same thing. Every single time. It was a couple camouflage jeeps, camouflage truck, semi with the flatbed, and on the flatbed, camouflage, bulldozers and graders. <laughs> Let's go to war! You know, you know how many bulldozers we have in Canada, in the military? We got more than tanks, I think. What is our military strategy with the bulldozers, right? Okay, we're gonna dig a huge hole. 
cover with dry leaves and brush and such. <laughs> then when the enemy comes along, where are those Canadians? Oh! <laughs> then we'll smack them with hockey sticks. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, are you okay? Come here, I'm sorry, I hit you too hard that last time, I'm sorry. Why don't you, uh, I'll take you to the hospital, it's free. Let's go. Uh, no, no, go now, you're gonna be waiting a while. Get in there. There's a reason it's free. Get in there and wait. I don't know. I, uh, we made some weird decisions. There's things that, um, okay, so I grew up, I live on the West Coast right now. I live, uh, this is the map of Canada, okay? It's my hand, it's the same size. But in the middle of, the, of middle of Canada, roughly, is a place called Saskatchewan. That's the province I grew up in. It's like a state, right? Uh, it's the province I grew up in Saskatchewan. We're directly north of like North Dakota, just so you get an idea where it is. And, and by the way, um, even we make fun of North Dakota. <laughs> so it's, I'm, no, we don't. I'm kidding. But in the middle of Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, in the middle of Saskatchewan, in the middle of the country, so we're not talking about, there's no oceans, there's no lakes, well, there's lakes, but there's no oceans. We've got in the middle of downtown Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, one of Canada's premier naval bases. <laughs> Look at a naval base. Like, what are we, are we banking on, on global warming or something? Are we gonna, like, this is gonna be water in a, in a couple of years. Let's just, we're thinking ahead. I don't know, this is not even close to the river. I have no idea what this thing is doing there. And here's the kicker too, it's called the HMCS Unicorn. Because <laughs> they believe in fairies and pixie dust and flying ships. Oh no, here comes Captain Hook, everybody, pixie dust! I was actually, I did that joke at a show one time. There's a guy that actually worked at the HMCS Unicorn, right? So after the show, he came up to me and he was like, you know, it was funny and everything. But just so you know, um, the naval base is there for recruiting purposes. That's why, that's why we have it there. It's for recruiting purposes. And I was like, oh, okay, because that's where your best sailors are coming from, eh? <laughs> Saskatchewan. <laughs> hey, uh, I can't swim. That's okay. We don't have any boats. We do have boats though, we got some boats, we got some ships, we got some submarines for a couple, couple more weeks. I think we're about to decommission some subs. We bought used submarines off the British a couple years back. Um, they're leaking. <laughs> Shouldn't that be the first thing you check if you're buying used subs, right? And it was the British that sold, the British, our allies, the British. Treat us like a used car salesman treat somebody. No offense to any used car salesman here. I can't afford to have anyone else leave. But what was that transaction like, right? It's like, uh, so uh, everything's okay with these things, eh? Oh, quite fine, quite tip top. <laughs> okay. um, do they, uh, they hold water? A little bit. A wee little bit. <laughs> we'll take them. I know they're supposed to submerge. I know that, but it was a preemptive submerging. It was a. And they're catching on fire too. That was the other thing. Um, how does it even happen? It's underwater. Bloop 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 bloop. Don't touch the water now. That's gonna be hot water. It's very hot. Grab some tea bags. Let's grab some tea. Let's make tea. No no no. Not Earl Grey. We're still mad at the British. And they're diesel too, eh? Cause that's what you want in a, in a stealthy sub, hey, diesel? <laughs> Must be a Canadian sub, I guess. It's, uh, could be an octopus with a bad cold, I suppose, I don't. No, no, it's a Canadian sub, it's sinking. Yeah, so it's. And it's on fire! I don't know. You know what's cool though? Um, what I find cool is American money. It's because, you know what? It's because we watch, that's the money I see in movies and the money I see on TV. It's like a romanticized money. It's cool money. You know what I mean? My, I don't see my money on TV and cool. I don't see my money, uh, Canadian money in bank heists, right? Or the romantic comedy, you know, when they win the lottery and they're throwing it on the bed. It's not, has no one seen this movie? Because every time I say this, people are like, what? Who threw money on a bed? I can't remember the name of it, but it would happen. <laughs> It's a movie. 
And it was American money, because American money is cool. It is, you can, eat, you can even bribe with American money and it's cool. I'll give you an example of what I mean. Um, say you go to a fancy restaurant, one where you need a reservation. When you're down here in the States, you need a reservation, fancy restaurant, you don't have a reservation. The guy's like, oh, your name's not on the list, sir. Here, it's cool, it's like, are you sure? Why don't you, uh, why don't you check under the name of uh, Andrew Jackson? Say, oh, right this way, Mr. Jackson, come on in, right? It's cool, even if you don't get a seat, it sounds cool. It doesn't work that way in Canada. Even if you got a seat, you know, it's like, uh, uh, yeah, your, uh, your name's not on the list, sir. Are you sure? Why don't you, uh, why don't you check under the name of, uh, uh, uh Her Majesty the Queen. <laughs> You're not gonna let me in, are you, huh? Okay. What about if this polar bear nibbles at your ankles a bit, huh? That'll change your tune. Arr! He's an aggressive polar bear. That's on the Toonie, the $2 coin. It has a polar bear on it. That's what I was doing there. That's why it was so small. <laughs> I have to explain our money. The, 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 the dollar coin has a loon on it. So that's why we call it a loony. And then the $2 came after, so it rhymed with loony. So we said, Toonie, loony Toonie. <laughs> we name our money after cartoons. <laughs> Can't wait for that $3 SpongeBob to come out. That's gonna be nice. That's. It's square, actually made of sponge, so if you spill a drink, hang on, I got a SpongeBob right here. I can just mop that right up. <laughs> well, don't throw it out. That's worth three bucks. <laughs> now, you know what we're doing in Canada? This is the newest thing. Uh, they're starting to print plastic money. Have you heard of this? It's plastic. It's actually, pl you can't rip it. It's a hundred dollar bill. The new hundreds are plastic. I've just seen other people use them. I've never had them. Oh, what's going on? Is it a hundred? I've never. <laughs> But they're plastic, it's like plastic bags. It's like, is that, does that say fries on it? What is that? That is a, uh, that's the grocery store here I thought would be a big hit with you guys, but. <laughs> Should've said Safeway. Should've said Safeway. That would've played in Canada. In Canada, they're like, what's fries? Well, we know what fries are, Never mind. Uh, <laughs> this is stupid. But it's plastic money. I, I thought we were getting away from that. You know, you go to grocery stores and stuff like that. They don't have plastic bags anymore. They, they have like biodegradable decomposing bags or whatever they are. That's what we need in the money. Here's, I'm running for Prime Minister of Canada. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go on this platform. We need to have organic decomposing money. And if you don't spend it, it's gonna decompose right in front. Oh, hurry up, let's get a fridge, whatever. Whatever you got, we'll pay for it. The money's starting to deteriorate, hurry up. That'll stimulate the economy, hey? I'll get the things moving. Is it, is it a good plan? You guys can vote, did you know that? Yeah. As Americans, because of the British North American Act in 1867, you guys legally have the right to vote in Canada. Did you know that? Of course not, that's a lie. How could you be so arrogant to think you can vote in my country? You guys were like, oh, okay, let's vote. No! <laughs> Come on, you guys. Stop being This is good water, I think that's from Canada. <laughs> I always have water on stage, I always bring water on stage with me because I get thirsty up here. And I don't want to ask, I was doing a show one time uh, and uh, great place, it was awesome, I was having a great show but I forgot to bring water up and I asked if they'd bring me some water and this guy, me, really well-meaning guy, he brought some water up to me but he didn't want to interrupt the show because I was in the middle of the show so he thought, oh maybe I'll sneak up behind him and slowly set it on. But by doing that, he just totally just drew a focus away. And Buddy was getting carried away behind me too. He's back there going like this. a bad idea. <laughs> hey, no, but, hey, but no offense to you Americans, okay? No offense. Please don't take offense to this, but I just want you to know, your beef here just isn't as good as good old grade A Canadian mad cow beef. It just doesn't have that tang, <laughs> that zip, that ha ah, 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 it's good beef! 
I was actually in Texas doing a show. I said that. This lady actually came up to me after the show and she was like, so do you guys really eat mad cow beef? <laughs> yes. Yes, we do. <laughs> Would you like me to mail you some? <laughs> Won't it go bad? It doesn't matter. It's mad cow. So... <laughs> Why are they so mad anyway? Because they're cold. That's the main reason. They're, oh, I'm, I'm a mad cow. Was my horrible Texas accent throwing you off? <laughs> was that, it was terrible, wasn't it? Oh, man. I don't know. I, there's different, and, and by the way, and I always get this question too when people find out I'm, I'm uh, Canadian. They're like, oh, do you speak French? And because I grew up in, in Western Canada, we, uh, we, we took French in school. Um, but we took it from other Western Canadians who had taken it from other Western Canadians who had, by the time my teacher talked, it might as well have been a dead language. We didn't know how to speak it. You know what I mean? <laughs> Sitting in class. Okay, everybody repete after me. Uh, disco tech. La disco tech. La disco tech. That's right. That means the disco tech. Seriously, I know, I, don't, I know no French at all. My teacher didn't know either. You could tell, right? It's like, don't, hey, don't, uh, by the way, for tomorrow, don't read ahead. Don't, I don't, don't read the, don't read the quattro, the ca, catra, don't read ca, catra chapter. Just stick with the toisium chapter. Okay, ce soir, bonsoir, bonsoir, everybody. See if we play tomorrow. What? It's terrible French. And I don't even, there's some customs in, in, in Quebec. In Mon like I went to Montreal. I've done the, the festival there a number of years, the, the Just for Last festival. And uh, there's things that they do there that I, I just wasn't aware of. Like, for example, in, 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 uh, in Quebec, in Montreal, when uh, women, when they greet you, uh, a little kiss on each cheek is, is what they're expecting. They want a little book, book, right? I didn't know that. The first time I was there, I had no idea, right? Like, after a while, I got used to it, right? I was like, hey, how you doing? <laughs> Honey, it's their custom. Would you just chill out? Okay, come here. But at first, I didn't know. I just see their necks go out like this. Like, you know, they're expecting this kiss right over here. I just thought, I just thought they couldn't hear me or something, you know? Hi, my name is Leland. Yeah. I said, my name is Leland. Je m'appelle Leland. And because you want to know... Um, and by, by the way, um, Western Canadians don't say A as much. You probably haven't heard it that much from me tonight. You get a little further east, you get Ontario, they say it every other word there. Um, but we don't say it as much. I, do, I probably have said it. I've tried not to, though. I tried to stop saying A. Uh, but you know when you try not to do something, it becomes even harder not to do it? I had to stop trying not to, because if I didn't, it would have boiled over into some like Canadian Tourette's rant or something, you know? <laughs> Boy, traffic out here is just horrible. <laughs> Anyway, I don't like the tra hey, 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 I don't like the tra hey, 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 traffic, hey, hey, traffic, I hate the traffic! <laughs> but if you didn't hear us speak, you wouldn't even know we were around, would you? Hey? <laughs> if you didn't hear us talk, you know what? We live among you. <laughs> you don't even know. Look to your left. Look to your right. There could be a Canadian sitting right there. And you'd never know. Go ahead, smell. Take a little sniff. Is there a faint smell of Canadian bacon and maple syrup? I don't, I don't even know. Am I, as a Canadian, am I supposed to like maple syrup? I hate maple syrup. It's tree sap. I don't like it. I want whipped cream and strawberries on my waffles, not tree sap. I don't like maple syrup. And I don't even know what Canadian bacon is. I'll be honest with you. In Canada, we don't have such a thing. Or it's all Canadian bacon. I don't know. Why, does Cana why is it so important that it's called Canadian bacon? It holds on to its citizenship, right? <laughs> Ever since the British North American Act, 1867, bacon has been able to vote. <laughs> Actually, there is a way. There is a way you could tell. And people, I didn't even know this was a stereotype of Canadians until I was here doing a tour uh, last couple of years. And apparently these uh, snowbird Canadians um, are horrible drivers. <laughs> is that the thing? 
That's what everybody tells me. And you know what? I've noticed it. I've only been here for like four or five days, and you can see the plates, and you see, and you know, they are bad drivers. It's like, come on, Canuck, let's go. Is there a different shade of green in Canada? Let's move it. Actually, I think there is a different shade, isn't there? Yeah. Just gonna wait a little longer and see if it changes. Oh, man. But I am a Canadian, Canadian in the US. I'm a stranger in a strange land kind of thing, right? Honestly, I don't think, honestly, I don't think the, the, the US will ever really, truly feel like home for me because, because I am Canadian. Do you know what I mean? Like, I love coming here. I love coming down here. The people are amazing. Uh, again, this has been no different this week. You guys have just been fantastic. This is a great crowd. I always have such a great time, but it's not my home. Do you know what I mean? As a Canadian, uh, because my citizenship is in heaven, uh, it's, it's, uh, <laughs> Because my citizenship. Yeah, it's true. Trust us. It's in the charter. Um, I'm going to have to edit that out because I'm going to be coming to that later. Um, no, because my citizenship is Canadian. You know what I mean? I think that's, that's why it'll never really quite feel like home. And in many ways, bear with me, in many ways, I think that's it's very similar to, to a Christian in the world. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't believe the world will ever truly feel like home to me because, because my citizenship uh, is in heaven. You know? And so what I'm trying to say is... Yeah, what I'm, what I'm trying to say is, Canada's a lot like heaven. When Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you, he was talking about Canada. The city of Zion is somewhere in the middle of Saskatchewan. <laughs> no, but you know what, in preparing for this video, uh, and what I, I did really want to talk about citizenship. That was, that was, that was my plan, and about a month ago, I was on tour with another comedian, and we were touring around. And one, one night we were up late talking, and I started to share with him some of the kind of the disappointments and frustrations I was having in my career. Um, I've been doing comedy for probably about 15 years now, and there's certain things I'd hoped to have accomplished by now. Um, a full house every once in a while. <laughs> but you know what I mean? There's certain things I'd, I'd hoped to achieve and hoped to have accomplished, and, and I hadn't, hadn't done that. And I told him about the, the verse where, in the Bible where it says that God's going to give you more than you, you can ask or even imagine. And I said, uh, basically, I said, that's impossible now. Because when I asked and I imagined, I asked and imagined that these things would happen when I was young. So even if I reached the goals that I was, I was hoping for, it didn't even happen. So it, now it, it, it's, it's never going to happen. And I realize how bad that sounds. I know how horrible that sounds. And in my mind, I can tell you exactly why that's, uh, you know, scripturally taken out of context and things like that. But honestly, I was just sharing my heart with him because my heart was hurt a little bit and I was just kind of being honest with him. And you know what he said to me? He said, um, whose expectations were they? And I knew exactly where he was going with this, right? Like I knew, but I decided, okay, let me just, let me just hear him out. And he said, whose expectations were they? Were they God's expectations for you or were they your own? See, they were my own expectations uh, for my life and and I hadn't, and I wasn't submitting to God's will. By not submitting to God's will and creating my own identity, I basically gave the enemy uh, permission to, to create and speak a false identity into my life, an identity based on a lie, the lie that I created. So here I was, uh, you know, mad and disappointed and frustrated uh, that God didn't give me this lie. How can, I be, how can I be bitter and angry at God for not giving me something that wasn't true in the first place? But that's exactly what I did. And, and if my citizenship is in heaven and my identity is that I'm a child of God, which is what happened when I became a Christian, then it all of a sudden hit me. All of a sudden, I needed to repent because I hadn't submitted fully to God's will. I needed to repent and give God my whole heart. He'd been telling me the previous month leading up to it, time and time again, he'd been telling me, whether it was a preacher, whether it was what I was reading in the Word, or whether it was a devotion, whether it was something I heard on TV, again and again and again, he kept telling me, give me your whole heart. And my little bird brain was like, okay, yeah, whole heart, I'm going to work on that. Here we go. But it finally, finally pierced my heart, and I finally really, really got it. You know what I mean? I don't know. When we submit, when, when I submit my will to God and submit my, when I submit, when I submit to God and when I submit my expectations to his will, then my identity is his will. And the Leland Clausen that I am is the Leland Clausen he created me to be instead of the Leland Clausen I think I should have been. Because the Leland Clausen I think I should have been was based on a lack, 
a lack of submission to who he wanted me to be in the first place. And that Leland Clausen speaks about himself in the third person a lot. And it's <laughs> off-putting. It's creepy. I think even Leland Clausen would agree. <laughs> I don't know, though. You know what? How, how, do, you, how do I submit to, to, to God? How do I... What's it, what's it, like, what's it mean being a, a citizen of heaven? What's it mean being a, a child of God? What's it mean giving your, your whole heart to God? It's, it's a total abandonment of who I was and embracing of everything he wanted me to be. That, that's it. If you're, if you're a non-believer here tonight, that's what it means to be a Christian. Abandon everything and follow Christ. And if you are a Christian here tonight, have you abandoned everything? Have you given everything up to follow Christ? Or are you still hanging on to stuff from this world? Amen. Amen. I, can you tell it's fresh, though? Can you tell it's fresh? This is a month ago. I was, ta- was going to talk about citizenship, but I wasn't going to talk about all this other stuff until God was like, no, this is, where, this is where you're at. This is what you need to talk about. It's crazy. I mean, it wasn't crazy. I'm not saying... <laughs> He's crazy. What? I don't know. I love my job, though. Can you tell how much I love my job? Yeah. It's fun. You got to enjoy what you do for a living. You're in a job you hate and you're sitting at home taking a sick day, legitimate sick day. You're, you're puking your guts out in the toilet there, but at the same time, you're still thinking, boy, I'm glad I'm not at work. <laughs> Hope I feel this sick tomorrow. <laughs> Actually, some people make themselves sick. You know these people? Actually, stick their fingers down their throat to make themselves throw up. Yeah, I'd never do that. <laughs> Amy, like, oh. I'm going to barf up a lung if I do that. I'm going to puncture a lung. Let's be honest here. I get a gag reflection picking my nose sometimes, you know? I don't know. I should get going here soon. It is a school night. I don't know. You know the biggest difference, though, I notice between uh, Canadians and Americans in my travels is, is just the way we view, view healthcare. It's a hot-button topic here. Like, you guys get, you, get in a, a, you get all tense when we even start talking about it. In Canada, we just don't... We, we take it for granted is what we do, really, in Canada. We take, we take uh, health care for granted. We go to the doctor. You guys do not go to the doctor as much as we do. You guys will... You could lose a limb. Just, ah! I'll be fine. I'll just walk it off. I think my, I want my insurance to go up. I'm just going to keep walking. In Canada, we go way too much. We go... Where I grew up in Saskatchewan, we go to the doctor for something to do sometimes, you know? We got a slow Saturday, you wanna go to the doctor's office or you wanna go to the mall? <laughs> doctor? Get there and be like, what seems to be the problem, Leland? Well, to tell you the truth, doctor, I kind of feel kind of um, uh, uh, bored. That's, the, that's what I'm here for, come on in. But it's a generational thing, too. We pass it on to our kids, the same mentality. We don't even realize it. I pass it on to my, my son. He's, he's 11 now, but when he was like three years old, he was really little. He was really upset one day. He was crying. And this is what he said to me verbatim. These are the words he used. Dad, I need to go to the doctor. My bum is itchy. <laughs> he wanted to go to the doctor for an itchy bum. So we went, because I was bored. <laughs> See what the doctor does with this one. But I got American comedian friends, and I just know it'd be a completely different thing if their son was like, Dad, my bum is itchy. He'd just look at him and say, drag it on the carpet like the dog does. I don't care. <laughs> no, the carpet, not the couch, the carpet. Get down. <laughs> now, and put the gun down. No, that's not your gun. It's your little brother's. Now put it down. <laughs> I don't know. I have, I've had good care, though. I've had decent, I blew my knee out a couple years ago. I was playing some basketball. It was after a show, and I was showing off to these kids. Hey, look what I can do. <laughs> I can cry like a baby. That's what I can do, gather around. It was terrible. I actually I completely ruptured the tendons in the lower part of my kneecap. They just completely went <laughs> and went down here. My kneecap was only attached on the top, and it actually went up. It was like... <laughs> like it didn't make the noise. I didn't... And turned into a cartoon all of a sudden or something. <laughs> it wasn't like that. 
But I actually had to get, like, I had to get emergency surgery right away. And you know where I was? Calgary. Everything happens in Calgary. <laughs> and, but I had to get, like, emergency. They actually, you know, um, they came and picked me up and took me in. I, I was again, I don't know if you had surgery lately. Have you been to the, uh, the OR lately? Or, it is freezing cold in there. Like, I'm, I'm Canadian. I know cold. And that was freezing cold. That was meat locker cold. I don't even... It scared me. They wheeled me in there. I was like, hey, uh... You guys know I'm alive, right? Uh, I'm not here to harvest my organs or something, are you? But I had surgery. What, they basically had to pull the, the tendons up, and they actually braided something in it or something. They pulled it all up, drilled holes, and reattached it. Because it was completely... So I had this cast on. It was like for the three months, I had this... Uh, this straight leg cast thing that I had to wear. And by the way, I had an orthopedic surgeon um, in, in Calgary. And then when I went home, because I, I uh, you know, fly back home to just outside of Vancouver, and I had to get an, uh, an orthodontic... Uh, uh, <laughs> an orthodontic... Turns out I had gingivitis too, so wow, a week. I had an orthopedic surgeon in Calgary and an orthopedic surgeon in Vancouver do follow-ups. But this guy, so the guy in Calgary said, um, so this is what happens, ACL, MCL, they get you bending right away. Get this bending, let's just take care of this. You gotta, otherwise you'll lose, you lose, lose movement. And all. But this thing is right over the top, right? So if you bend, <laughs> so do not bend, do not flex for six weeks, he said. It was a Velcro cast. He said, do not bend or flex for six weeks till it completely heals, and then you can learn to bend again. You have to go through physical therapy and do that whole thing. And I was like, okay, cool. I get back to, to Vancouver to the orthopedic surgeon there. <laughs> and he's got a different system, right? He's also got it. And he's like, well, let's give it a bend and see what happens. <laughs> no, no, buddy said not to. Ah, what does he know? I don't know. I don't know what either of you know, but let's not chance it. He scared me. Oh, he scared. Every time we went in there, I was so scared because he always wanted to just kind of get, let's just come on, let's, see what, let's just bend it a little bit. Let's just see where we got. Let's do some yoga. Put your foot to the back of your head. I was afraid it's gonna stay like that or something, you know? And how am I gonna defend Canadian healthcare to you guys then? You know, it's like, no, it's uh, for stairs, it's a stair leg. It's mainly for, it's the newest thing. It also looks like you're going really fast when you're just walking. So I'm, I'm lying on, on the bed right after surgery and uh, I can't put any weight on it, right? So, I, but I kept on to get up and go to the bathroom, so I, I'd get up, and because I couldn't put any weight on it, I kept using the, um, the IV pole, kind of like a, like a crutch, right? So I'd lean on that, and I'd, I'd use that to go to the bathroom. And I kept doing this, because I'm a nervous guy. I go to the bathroom a lot. Um, I'm sharing with you guys right now. I'm a nervous. And the nurse kept having to come and help me. She kept coming in there to help me every time she saw it. I could tell she was getting tired of this, right? She was kind of starting to roll her eyes a little bit and stuff. And so finally she said to me, look, why don't you just use the bedpan? That's what it's there for, just, just use the bedpan. And she'd been saying the same thing to my, uh, my roommate there, hey? He wasn't this close. He was uh, really short on beds in Canada, really short. I just had surgery, Jim, give me the covers. It wasn't that, he was, he was over a ways. But she'd been saying the same thing to him, and I was just like, you know, I thought, I, 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 he probably felt the same way I did, so I thought, I'll just tell her. I said, look, the reason we don't want to use the bedpan, honestly, is that it's humiliating. You know, you come and, and fill it up and... No, no, yes. <laughs> I clearly didn't understand how it was used. He was like, okay, thank you. <laughs> anyway. What I told her was, um, it's humiliating because, you know, you <laughs> we fill it up, you gotta come take it away, things like that. It's embarrassing, it's humiliating. As I said that, I turned to go to the, the bathroom one more time and I was wearing a hospital gown. It was wide open in the back, wide open. I was like, it's humiliating, that's what it is. I've got dignity, that's what I've got. That's what you're looking at right now, man with dignity. You guys have been a fantastic crowd. Thank you so much for coming out tonight.